What's up everyone? You recently submitted a lot of your replays to the YouTube community tab and I appreciate it. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at them and hopefully I can help you guys out and make sure you understand what your mistakes are. And understand even if your replay didn't get picked, you should be listening to what I have to say because everything that applies to one person also applies to the next. So the first replay we're going to be looking at is Makarov. <laughs> great name, great name. On the animation, what he said he wanted help with was decision making. Now, I'm not exactly certain what you mean by decision making because decision making, you know, everything you do is a decision. However, I'm gonna assume that you kind of mean like in fights because that's usually what people refer to it as. So let's check it out. So the first thing I wanna talk about is this decision you make here. So I'm just gonna quickly give the, the sequence before it. So you're landing top, it's around 11 minutes in, right? Uh, your CS is pretty good. It's solid for, you know, any mage. Honestly, first off, I would recommend not picking this hero if you wanna win MMR. It's, it's very difficult to play. And uh, I don't know, I think usually has a bad impact. But first things first, you get this kill bottom, which is great, right? Wonderful. However, what you do next, there's a major issue with it because it doesn't play for efficiency and you have to be playing for efficiency. Otherwise, you should just not play this role, right? Because right now you deny those creeps, whatever, but then you instantly TP top. Now, I understand why, right? There was a wave under the tower. However, Mars was TPing here and you see that, like you see it. You can't tell me that you didn't see that. And, you're, and you can yell this, you definitely saw it. And you ping him. You're like, hey man, get out of my lane. You can't do that. You can't do that. Don't be that guy. Like, that's just annoying. Like, what's... I don't want to say what's wrong with you, but, like, he deserves to nuke your wave. You saw him TPing in. Instead, you literally just got a kill bottom. Look what happens. There's just a free wave here. In fact, this could be even safer because you don't have to commit your TP. So you take this wave, right? And even this is a more efficient play. You take this wave, right? Then you take this camp. And then, after you take this camp, then you TP top, right? Then you TP top. That's efficiency. Instead, you just let a wave go by. Now who's going to farm this? Your lich or, or legitimately no one? That's the problem here. You ignore a free wave and grief your, your Mars who's now dead because you force him into ganking because you stole his farm. Like you legitimately just grief their team hard. Now, next off here, the Sand King makes a pretty good play and he starts contesting you, right? And that's because you committed your TP so early, right? Instead, what you could have also done is, you know, you farm this, then you farm this camp. Then you farm this camp and then you sort of make your way towards mid because mid is actually a really good place to farm it gets left open a lot in these lower mmr games this is around archon and it gets left open very consistently so what you could do instead of just walking top and getting contested you could just blink towards mid farm everything on the way right and then when you get to mid you're like hey mid waves here let me farm it it's really safe it's really really safe nine times out of ten if i'm a support player trust me guys i'm also taking this so this applies to you support players as well all right you could have pushed us in way before the clinks and then after you push that in you're like hey no one's bottom and then because you're mid, you can choose bottom or top. But because you're top and you have no TP at the current moment, well, now you do because you just bought one, you get a bit stuck. And now you're getting run up by this Sand King because I noticed the reason why I went back to this was I was at the 19 minute mark and you only had like 100 CS, right? Or 111 or something like that. And I mean, part of it is an AM problem, but a lot of it's your decision making of not pushing in your current wave, right? You just ignore the current wave and then you like ping people, oh, push in top. Why did you TP bottom before pushing in top? It doesn't make any logical sense. If you have the the ability, right, if you are allowed to push in your wave in your lane for maximum efficiency, then jungle, right? Then jungle. Like here, this is fine and all, but once again, you TP'd bottom, so you get a bit trapped. Here, okay, you do go mid, but you hopefully you see the problem with your TPs. You're just getting yourself stuck instead of just like farming towards mid or actually pushing the wave that you're currently in before it's even dangerous. So honestly, man, I'm just going to give you a couple tips for going up an MMR. You can take this to heart or you can be like, back off, dude. Like, like I'm going to do what I want. These are my tips because I really want to help you and I want to see you improve. Do not pick any mage first off. If, if you want to make your life easier, pick a hero that actually, you know, either like Wraith King, Naga, or PL. Heroes that actually farm fast if you're going to AFK farm. Or pick a fighter like Void or Jug. Then, last but not least, also focus primarily on improving your timings. Your CS is pretty low for farming this much right? It's pretty low. You're not really showing up the fights, correct? I think we both could agree. It's pretty low. You have major efficiency issues. You just blink past this camp for no reason. They're not going to kill you, right? Like they, they, there is no threat for you. You have some efficiency issues. So before you worry about like, what could I have done better? My decision making, because I, I don't know you, I don't want to like make false judgments, but I get the five, like you're asking me about decision making. 
in a game where you ended 8-1 and, and lost. And usually the vibe I get when people send me these type of replays, because I've talked to a lot of people about a lot of replays, is like, hey man, like, look at this game. I, I crush, my team still lost. Like, what am I even supposed to do? Well, the answer is actually, it's maybe not what I'm seeing, but it's what you're not seeing. Like, it's maybe not what you're you're doing necessarily in fights, but maybe what you're not doing. And I mean, here, obviously, like, if we had to talk about decision making, uh, when you go into fights as AM, you should be checking mana, which I think you do a little bit here, but okay, you do, but then you, you decide to ult them anyway. Uh, and you didn't really blink on top of him. So obviously a bit of jump issues there, correct? Because um, you do have the blink cast range talent. So you should be, you know, focusing on, hey, can I get on top of this guy? And then you like blink in between them, right? That's just a bad blink. If you're playing any mage guys, uh, you know, just to talk about this hero, even though I don't want to talk about it that much, to be honest, at the current moment, because I don't think it's a good idea to play the hero if you, you know, care about winning, you have to make sure your initial jump is on point. If your initial jump is not on point and you're playing a hero like Animage or Storm, where they, you know, they really have to commit, on their first kill, you lose. You're done. The fight is not going to go well unless you're giga ahead. So here, you blinked in between two heroes. That's the worst possible place. Blink on one or the other. Choose one, right? Because then you would have gotten this kill, right? You would have gotten this invoker kill. You'd be snowballing because he's pretty farmed, I think, right? He's level 15, relatively farmed. Right? Yeah, pretty big. A lot of kills, seven to three. And that would have been huge. But you end up getting, what, neither of them? Okay, your team just straight up loses the fight. Exactly. And that's all I have to say. A couple of things you need to focus on as a player before I move on. One, increase your efficiency. You have to just get your numbers up. There's nothing else I can say. Before you, you guys improve as a carry player, the one thing you have to focus on is your, your first 20 minutes in terms of how fast you farm. And then the second part is your jumps. Like, you jumped in between two heroes. You can't win fights as anti-mage if you can't get on top of someone and burst them. That is the goal of the hero, and you miss that goal completely. Also, once again, you have efficiency, uh, lack of efficiency with identifying the next camp. It takes you way too long, right? You blink past the wave, and then you walk to the next camp. That's like the literal opposite. I'm just trying to, I'm just calling you out because I want you to do better. So, let's move on. Next up, we have Deadly on the Templar Assassin, and you were asking, how can I be more effective on the map and things to do in the laning stage? Like, how can I be more active in the laning stage? And uh, I would love to answer your question. However, I do have to point out that I was going through your profile and I noticed that you won a battle cup under the name Dota Alchemy. I don't know, man. I'm just lost for words. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, guys. I, I have nothing against Dota Alchemy. It's a joke. Relax, right? There's no beef. It's a joke. All right, regardless, first things first, you should essentially always ship out a self. I do not care that you are PA against Weaver. I don't care. If you have a salve and they don't, let's do the math, guys. Here we go, quick math. If you have a salve and they don't, how much more HP, effective HP, do you have than them? Well, great job, Jimmy. 400. How'd you come to that conclusion? Oh, is it because Sal gets 400 HP? Yes, that means you can trade 400 more HP than your opponent, right? 400. Do you know how much that is? I, I hope you guys understand. That is a lot. So you essentially, assuming this guy doesn't buy one either, which he doesn't, also he doesn't have a branch, meaning you could eat a tango and trade even harder, you can destroy him. If you buy a salve, even if you bought two salves and auto attacked and focused on trading, especially when you hit your level one, level two refraction, especially level two refraction, you would destroy him. You can destroy him. No, it looks like you have a good game anyway, because frankly, you sent me a match where you went 25 and one. Okay, <laughs> but regardless, if you guys are confused, or how do I start beating my opponent? The first thing to look at is preemptive regen. Preemptive regen. Because you trade hard, and then the guy who has a salve wins in the end. Right, and I'm not saying if you're a Leshrac and you have three salves and your opponent has zero, that you should be diving their tier one tower. No, that's not a good idea either. But you can just simply go harder on your opponent. Regardless, I mean, if you want to know how to win the laning stage harder, guys, like the formula is generally kind of simple on TA. It's okay, hit a lot of side blades. There's obviously other things you could do in terms of really good aggro, uh, like here, right? This is a good example for you could where you definitely should aggro. The creeps are on his high ground. This one is like fine and all, but once he starts repositioning, you should shift back onto your range creep. You could even get both the melee creeps onto your range creep, which would create a scenario for you to potentially deny it. And it would just give you a better angle, right? Trying to side blade him when the creeps are like this is near impossible. So what you do is you pull it back, right? When he's standing here, you pull it back, aggro, pull it back, and then you can hit him on a diagonal. And that would be one way to really improve. But I mean, regardless, like you see how he hits you here? Imagine if this guy is a salve or imagine if you have a salve. Like you kill him anyway because he's bad, but I just want to make it clear, right? Let's, let's, let's look at this. If my man Weaver has a salve and he pops it right now and he goes on you, do you think the trade is this bad for him? I mean, he shouldn't go on you anyway because you have level 2 refraction. It's just a... I mean, he's just bad. 
Also, he doesn't have bugs yet. If he took bugs level 2, maybe he'd have a chance. Regardless, guys, I'm telling you, you don't have to outplay your opponents if you buy better items than them. I'm really trying to get that through people's head. Items really can determine on how well you play Dota. If you have a BKB in the mid game and your opponent doesn't, and you're playing Sven and they're playing, I don't know, like Faceless Void, and you stun them, they're going to die, okay? Like, there's a higher chance, I should say. I don't know for sure. I'm not saying they just explode. Void's head just pops off when you stun him as Fen. But the point is, items change the game. Now, because you don't have a salve, you're just sitting here with 200 HP. And if this matchup is even relatively hard, which Weaver TA isn't really that difficult, he could have pressured you out right away. Lucky you, you get a regen rune. I mean, you did ship out a salve, which is good. But preemptively ship it out, and you're already going to notice a big difference if you actually abuse the fact that you have a salve. You can abuse it. Also, you can buy mangoes and spam refraction and then the game is super easy one thing i recommend you guys do is you pick lena and you just use lsa off cooldown and buy mangoes if you do that and you mix it in with good auto attacks that prevents you from taking any creep or tower damage you will destroy your opponent if you're below 3k 10 out of 10 times okay i just want to mention a quick little thing about efficiency that you're lacking here the key to efficiency is something i'm going to mention in a video or didn't mention in the five rules of mid when you were going for efficiency the best thing to do the majority of the time is push out the lane then jungle because you should be looking at the map to judge this you see where your wave is how it's close to the lane that means the other one is also close to the lane so you should not go to the jungle right away right because you're going to miss a lot of creeps right now venge saps the xp oh no she doesn't right but you just you missed what two creeps you missed two creeps for no reason. You could have just killed the wolves after you pushed out this wave. And this is a good wave to push out because it's the five minute wave especially, right? It spawned at five minutes, this wave coming in, meaning that you can clear the wave, then you can clear the camp and you won't block the respawn. So it's even more efficient, but you missed that opportunity to have a, a ton of efficiency. Instead, you, you kill that first, then you like miss it CS and then you kill this, which is better. Um, and overall, that was not too bad. Uh, like your efficiency is generally good, but just a bit of a mishap you had earlier there And I wanted to point it out because that could be the difference between you getting to the next rank or not And yeah, I mean in terms of having impact in the side lanes You don't have to like your TA you really don't have to you know what I mean? Like what you're doing is fine You just push wave take camps push wave take camps one thing you could consider is maybe trap trap stacking the ancients Wait, does that work anymore? I actually don't know I don't know. Don't play enough TA. Regardless, I think your efficiency is fine. I'm not going to lie, guys. Like, if you're curious on how to go up an MMR, what is this? I think this is like an Archon game, something of that sort around there. Legend. This is pretty good, right? This is pretty good because you do go 25 and 1. And I want to make it clear, guys. Like, you win this game pretty convincingly. This is how you should win your games. This is what they need to look like. Like, these, this 25 and 1 number, yeah, it don't, you don't have to be 25 and 1 every game. That's a bit ridiculous. But you should be having, like, these reliable timings, right? This is good, right? 12-minute Deso, fantastic. I mean, you have 4 kills as well, which won't always be the case. But 12-minute, uh, 12-13-minute to 12 to 13 minute Deso, really good blink timing, 15. Like, this is the optimal 15-minute uh, blink Deso. These are the timings you should focus on as a core player. And I'm not saying, like... You know, because you have to know how to get to the timings as well, which I'm hopefully explaining a bit, but I also don't really understand why you bought a Manta. Bit weird. I kind of get it for like silences and, and such, but seems a bit meh to me. Regardless, yeah, uh, not bad. In terms of impact in the early game, I don't really know what you mean by that. Like, yeah, here, I guess uh, if you really want the, the big thing that I notice, it's this play coming up here, right? I mean, your, your team wants to fight 10-minute bounties. You could have just let that one creep go, right? Just sacrifice one creep to get to the wave quicker. I'm fine with you pushing out the wave only only because, you know, you are TA and you can get there really quickly. But regardless, like, yeah, if you want to have impact, you should show up to the Vroom fight. That's all. Because it would have been essentially a free double kill for you here. So, you know, if you want to have impact, play around the bounty runes. Play around things like haste runes and... You'll have a lot more impact in, in ganking the side lanes. Just don't make it totally random is what I'd say. And the last thing I'd say is if you really want to just reliably gank side lanes for whatever reason, you can take triangle, uh, carry a smoke, and then just like smoke bottom. And not that that's always really a good idea on TA because you want to stick to farming for the most part, but the bounty runes are, are really good, right? Because this is just bad, right? This whole like TPing around thing, you do get the weaver kill, but like nine times out of 10, it's like, eh, it's like very, eh. It can be good if they're hardcore diving and you know, you do get a weaver kill, which is good, but usually the bounty runes are a really good way to look at it. No joke though, I think you have a lot of good movement in this game. So keep it up and just work out some of your efficiencies and, and laning issues. Because honestly, I'm almost certain if I lane against you and I was that weaver, you would lose. And I'm not saying that to boost my ego, right? I already know I'm the greatest of all time. I don't have to boost my ego, okay? I'm just saying that because if he played lane different and bought more regen than you, 
right, or preemptively bought it, he would get ahead in terms of last hits and denies, and then the lane would be much harder, even though it is already a favorable matchup, I'm assuming. I don't, I can't say I studied the Weaver TA matchup for years, but that would be my guess. All right, next up, we have Dot, and shocker, shocker, guys, another stomp. Wow. Okay, well, actually, not every game has been a stomp, so I don't know what I'm saying. The last two were stomps. <laughs> okay. Disregard that. Regardless, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be watching Dot on the position for Lena. What do you want me to look at in here? What you said was early game and mid game. Also, when should you be stacking? Good question. Uh, I'm happy to give you my take on that because I also find that question to be a bit hard. Like when you actually leave the lane and stack, you're running the notorious Sand King Lena lane that I feel like I bring up in more than half the videos. Uh, and let's see how you play that out. First things first. Okay, big issue I have here. You can't do this. You have to position yourself not to get hit by creeps. When you're blocking, you should let it go once you get to here. Just let it go. What happens is what happens at this point with the creep wave. You have to reposition to be standing here. Because the Ogre Magi is here, right? You are not supposed to be tanking the brunt of the, the Ogre Magi damage. You don't want to 1v1 him, correct? That would be big trash. So, you should be standing on the left. Instead, you're standing inside the creep wave. This is very bad. Very bad. Do not stand in the creep wave, because then you get mauled by the creep wave, and then you get hit by a bunch of spells, and now you're dead, okay? Why does this happen? As a position for when you are against the Trilane, which you should have known because they what, they fought you at the runes, right? You are playing on the left side of the lane, left side. Your Sand King is the meat shield for you here, so you have to act like he's the meat shield. You should never, even if this is a 2v2, you should be standing on the left using Sand King as your meat shield. You are the DPS, not the damage soaker, right? Now, if you have to take some auto attacks occasionally, and you know, your, your landing partner is some high DPS hero that is close to death, sure, like, sure. But more often than not, this is the worst thing you could possibly do. Aggro the creeps and go into melee range against Ogre Magi. That's like big L, fat L. Also, you have 90 gold coming back to the landing stage, you should buy an item, like buy a mango or buy another set of tangos, one or the other. Okay, you do, you buy a set of tangos. In terms of stacking, I'll just give my brief input on that. It, it, it's not really good to stack early, first things first. You don't want to stack like a minute or two minutes in, unless you're a position five or you're a four and your off laner really doesn't need your help and you threaten no kills. You really don't want to stack in this lane, unless you're very confident it's going to give your Sand King like an early level three that you guys can get a kill with and he doesn't need your help during it, right? So like maybe right now, if you were level two or like close to level two and he's close to level three-ish or like level two, uh, high level two, mid level two, you could back off into the jungle and argue, you know, getting some stacks off, right? Because then when you come back, he'll hit this big spike where uh, Sandstorm goes up by more than double, right? Nice bug. Sandstorm goes up by more than double, so it'd be a really good time, right? That That's a, a big advantage, playing around those those sort of level spikes. Like here, maybe you could go for a stack. Maybe. But honestly, I could just see you guys going on dry right now. In fact, you should. I don't... I, I guess Sand King's going for some rap. Also, you don't need to preemptive stun in this lane if you're even relatively committing for a kill. You should be uh, using random stuns, but um, you could have gone on draw there, right? Like, that whole time. I... I I frankly don't know why you didn't. You're, you're both level two. It's a good spike. I don't even think Ogre Magi has a sentry, so Sand King's basically invincible. It'd just be a lot of damage when she was standing right here. That's all. You don't even have to kill her because if you overcommit to her then, the Ogre Magi will walk up to you, ignite, hit you with an orb of venom. Your movement speed will drop to like zero and you'll take a lot of damage. But if you just did like 200, 300 damage to her, huge win. Even if she has a salve, which she doesn't have tangos. Oh my God. Oh my God. What? She doesn't have tangos? She doesn't have tangos. <laughs> Guys, she doesn't have tangos. And you didn't stun her there. I mean, like, if you hit her once, if you hit her once, it's permanent damage. It's like a tier three tower. Perma it's permanent, unless they have a treant. It's permanent. So just, you guys need to be hitting her. It's that simple. And I'll hear once again, your, your positioning is just way off. It's just way off. It doesn't make any logical sense. And I'm saying that to help you. You don't need to be on the right side of the lane. Don't go on the side where Ogre Magi is. He's trying to beat you up. He wants some of that. You know? Ogre Magi needs some... He's hungry. He wants some cake. Don't give it to him. Play on the left. Play with your Sand King. Go on her. Just go. Even though Sand King's spike is... Like, for, for killing is typically more so level 3. She has no regen. She has no regen. Like, look. Look. How hard was that? And you led with stun. I don't even know why. Like, you don't need to leave a stun. Sand King could leave a stun. His is easy to hit. Yours is not as easy. It's actually pretty easy, but it's not as easy. Just go. Like, 
the, uh, not gonna lie guys, you have to learn how to win lane by taking advantage of regen. I've said it in the last two replays, it applies to every lane. If you have a regen advantage, you can hit your opponent more than they can hit you. It's really simple, and pros, if they lane against you and saw this, you would get obliterated, obliterated. Now here, I'm okay with your aggression because you realize that the drow has nothing, but once again, like, you should be playing more so around your Sand King uh, and, and letting your Sand King take the damage, right? You should not be going in front of him this much. It's going to end up working out and all, but, like, that's so unbelievably unnecessary. Like, these trades shouldn't even be close. And I'm, I'm just being frank. Just being frank, you know? I'm hiding in the attic. All right, next thing. I don't have any issue with you placing this ward, but you obviously took a bit long to get the banner runes. Not optimal. And then you're queuing up an Aether Lens, but you don't have boots yet. I hope you don't actually do this. I do hope you buy boots. Oh, you just... Okay, that was dangerous. Yikes, okay. Uh, that was a very early salve. You could have eaten a Tango, but that's okay. Not optimal, once again. Yes, you really need to buy boots. You need boots. I don't know what else to say. Like, I don't know how you have an impact on Lina if you can't position properly. Like... It's funny because you would have gotten this kill without having to tank the tower for 18 seconds and casting two spells if you had boots, right? You want to know why? Because you would be in right-click range right now. <laughs> so you wouldn't have to tank 400 HP for no reason. And I don't know if that comes into play later on, but more often than not, it does. Right? We'll have to see, obviously. But, nope, you're tanking it again. Okay. <laughs> Regardless, man, hopefully you can see the issues with your positioning. Uh, if there's one thing I'd fix with you, it would definitely be your, your early positioning and ability to just kind of commit for kills with your teammates. Got to coordinate and be like, hey, Drow is no regen. Drow is also a hero that hates getting gone on. Just go. Just go. <laughs> okay, and last but certainly not least, we're going to be looking at a safe lane PL game. And I want to add on PL because I think he's a really good pup hero. Um, that people can excel at if they stick to the formula. So, what is the formula? Well, first things first, you should have 10 more CS by now. I'm going to make your life simple, bro. You started the game with a mango, right? We're going to go back. We're going to go back. Don't buy the mango. And you may be like, Speed, no. I need the mango. How am I supposed to spirit lance my enemies? Well, the answer is really, really simple. Stop spirit lancing your enemies. Like, let's look at this landing stage. I want you to tell me the impact your spears have in this landing stage. At least your first one. Let's look at it. Oh, no way! He hits Popolin with the spear from downtown! Oh, the lane's won! No, it did nothing. It did nothing. That's just a waste of 110 mana. Your only goal right now needs to be to secure creeps. And you actually do do this a little bit later on, so there's like, you know, there's some signs of hope, right? There's some signs of hope. Like for this range creep coming up here, I just want to talk about the mini combo. You should hit and then nuke when it's half HP, right? Any creep that's like around this HP, you hit and then, then nuke, right? Be a nuke. Don't nuke. Gotta hit that nuke, right? Also, uh, the reason why you shouldn't buy the mango is so you can buy the Quelling Blade right away from the side shop after the Banner Rune spawn, right? It would have allowed you to do that this game and you'd miss less CS. Because frankly, brother, you asked in the comment, well, what was that? What I could do in better in the future. And I respect that. I think that's a great mentality. What you can do better in the future, I just, I'm just, right, I'm being frank with you. You have to make this number. This number has to be 25 when the clock hits five, right? Because if we skip ahead, as we saw earlier, you don't hit 25 until, wait for it, it's coming, 7.30. 7.30. You're two and a half minutes late, and I'm just trying to make it clear to you. You will not go up in MMR until you can fix this and make it reliable. You have to be reliable. This number has to reliably be 25. Otherwise, you have no chance. You have no chance. And also, once again, stop spearing people casually. It does not do anything, right? It's a waste of mana. It's a waste of mana. And now you're just getting run up by a Nyx Assassin, which is unfortunate, right? But if you have better items, you can just jungle a lot faster. That's Dota in a nutshell. If you have treads right now, in addition to your Wraith Bands, you could just run through the jungle and let Warlock take XP. And then what happens in 20 to 25 minutes is Warlock is like the highest level support in the game, or he hits a really early 6, he wins a fight for your team, and you're like, wow, Dota's so easy. Yeah, because it is. It's really easy. I'm kidding, it's actually really hard. But at the same time, it can be kind of easy, and that's what I'm trying to make clear to you guys. Right? Stop making game complicated. Stop overthinking Dota. If you're a safe lane player, you have to improve your numbers. You might be like, well, speed, I hit the, the general timer of 50 by 10. So 50 by 10 means I'm a great carry. Well, I mean, I guess you didn't really actually hit 50 by 10. But in addition, your PL, right? You're a hero can, that can take jungle camps when he's 5, level 5, especially level 6. So 
the better number you should really be starting for is 65 to 70 at your at your bracket, right? Because the, the main pattern you just have to get to is get all the last hits until I'm level 5, and then when I'm level 5 to level 6, I start pushing out the wave as fast as possible and then taking the nearby jungle camp. If you can do that, you'll go up an MMR. I'm almost concerned to say anything else because I, I think if you just listen to me on that and can actually improve on that and nothing else, you will have a better time in Dota because people just overthink. Stop. Just stop. Just do that. Just do that. And now at this point, you're just AFK laning running out of Legion Commander. You're supposed to lose this matchup, to be honest. She bought a Hand of Midas. So, you know, not to be that guy, but if she bought like face boots and stats as well as mangoes or like, you know, soul ring or two bracers, you would get crushed. Just putting it out there. If she maxed overwhelming odds and you had illusions just walking around casually in the lane, you would get crushed. But she maxed press the attack, which is actually all right. Honestly, it's actually okay too, in my opinion. It's really not that bad if she bought like phase boots and stats, she still could trade with you with press the attack max. And you know, no points in overwhelming odds. This build's just meh, very bad. But she didn't. So you get away with what you're doing. The problem with what you're doing is you're chasing a hero that realistically, if this is a higher MMR match, should be chasing you. It's reversed because you're not actually doing what you should be doing. Which might sound weird. It's like, well, shouldn't I run at them if they're they're bad speed? Uh, kind of, but if you're a safe lane hero, you should be more so focused on hitting your timings rather than shutting down your opponent 9 times out of 10. If you are playing PL, Naga, Wraith King, Alk, one of those farming heroes, if you want to run at your opponent, pick Slark, Void, or Jug, one of those type of heroes. That's the separation. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of reviewing your replays. If you didn't get in, I'm very sorry, we'll be doing a guest rank soon, so try your luck again. Once again, I pick these at random, right? Like, I, I just pick... I just pick a replay, okay? Maybe there's some bias in there, not gonna lie. But it's not like I know you, right? Blah might be my cousin, and the last replay might have been my brother, but, you know, you're not supposed to know that. <laughs> Regardless, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please do like and subscribe. And if you want to see the channel grow, yeah, do those things. And peace. Are you tired of being hard stuck at your rank? Over at GameLeap.com, we have a library of hundreds of guides authored by pro players and coaches covering literally every aspect of Dota. Whether you're looking to master a new hero or role or just polish up your existing skills, GameLeap is the proven place for competitive gamers to hone their craft and unlock their secret potential. Hit the link on screen right now, right now, to take advantage of our special offer for a 25% discount, guys, 25%, and start your journey today.